In this video, we're presenting how to do a risk assessment using an Excel spreadsheet. This is an update of a methodology that I've presented in the past and that was, uh, I've been using uh, in my courses for, for many years now. So it's a rather simple methodology, which is based on uh, risk scenarios. And so in this particular example we have here, we have 10 risk scenarios. These scenarios used to be done on a Word document and then input the data. But now in this version, the scenarios are created directly on the Excel spreadsheet and sheets S1, S2, all the way to S10. So when creating the scenarios, you document them here and you indicate the, um, the different settings that you're going to be using for the probabilities or the assessment of the weight of the different scenarios. So as well, we're using uh, risk mitigation measures. So this used to be done in a different way as well. But in this version, what you need to do is to select the risk mitigation measures that correspond to the different scenarios. So as we have scenarios 1 to 10, we have risk mitigation measures from N1 to M10. So to the corresponding uh, scenarios. The way that the risk mitigation measures are selected is by putting a one in front of the control that you want to include as a risk mitigation measure. So in here we have uh, controls from ISO 27002, from the NIST 800-53, and the CIS controls version 7.1. Now for educational purposes, these have values next to them that don't necessarily correspond to a real world scenario, but are based on estimates so that when students are using this, they can, uh, they can use the scenarios, uh, the values that are here, and not have to spend too much time doing research to find the exact numbers. If you were to use something like this in a real world scenarios, obviously these values would have to match the reality. So when, when doing the risk assessment, the first thing you need to do on the first sheet is to indicate what is the risk appetite of the organization. So how much risk is the organization willing to take? And this goes realistically from low at 0 0.3 to high at somewhere around 0 0.7. So you should be in that range, 0 0.5 being risk neutral. So depending on the how willing is the organization to take risks, you would adjust this value. Uh, so once you've entered that value here, number one, you then go to the scenarios and input all of the scenarios, and in which case evaluate the level of, of the different values that are here. So the likelihood that something occurs, the presence of the, the vulnerability, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then from there, it, it will also be running a Monte Carlo simulation. So the Monte Carlo simulation is actually seen here on this page, but uh, you don't actually have to do anything there. The, the scenario, once you start entering the data, this, the Monte Carlo simulation will be used to evaluate the uh, risk, the probable risk uh, based on the, on the simulation. So uh, you're entering the estimated risk. So what is the what is the expected risk, as as is discussed in class? What is the expected risk, the most likely outcome, and what is the tol the maximum risk? So in the worst case scenario, what would be the risk estimate that you would have? And so based on this, then we're running a scenario and coming up with the probable risk. You can see indicated in red here. Uh, through conditional formatting in Excel, the values that are uh, that are uh, exceeding the risk tolerance. So once the uh, risk scenarios are calculated, the uh, risk mitigations are calculated as well. We have the residual risk here. And in cases where we see that the residual risk is still higher than the tolerated risk, if it's only slightly higher, probably not a big issue. If it's significantly higher, then you would probably want to add on to the risk mitigation measures uh, for that scenario. 
And then uh, it comes to the, the last part, which is the recommendation. So what we're seeing here is a columns, portfolio columns A, B, C, and D. And what we are going to be recommending is column C. So column A is based on the minimum that needs to be done. Column B is based on the, uh, the highest risk areas. Column D is if we uh, were to do everything that is there. And then column C is what we need to change to put the values of what corresponds to our recommendation. What do we, what would we recommend that the organization do based on the other columns, based on the rest of the data as well. Um, and so uh, this is what we need to justify. So we're creating a portfolio of risk mitigation measures that would eventually be handed over to the uh, projects department so that you know the, the, some projects would be put into motion so that eventually the, the, uh, risk, uh, the risk would be uh, properly managed. So this is a, a somewhat simplistic approach that has been created for educational purposes, which I've been using for years with students uh, in different versions of this. And this is the latest version that is just that I've just uh, releasing uh, uh, now. So uh, the, the, the documentation as well, as you can see, I've tried to make it as bilingual as possible, uh, being that you know uh, my university is in Quebec. And so we do work in English and in French in cybersecurity, of course, uh, in both uh, in both languages. So thank you.